now we're in the endurance trial where we are operating for four days of continuous operation and it's really exciting. We're not relying on a master to drive the vessel, we're using the computer and its own algorithms and the software team. In the endurance trial where we are operating for four days of continuous operation. On day one, we started off from Hostel's Henderson Shipyard. Okay, Nathan, gonna hand over to you. All green, you have command. Thank you, my bet. And we transited out through Rockness Island and then south down to Muscleton. The importance of performing the endurance trial as it demonstrates capacity and trust that this platform can operate for a long period of time. So it can perform the missions it needs to at sea with a level of confidence that it can achieve that. The morning of day two started off us thinking around how the system could be made autonomous in the future, what our operational uh, capacity looks like and how we can function. We steamed up the coast again and arrived at the Abrolhos Islands. Beautiful landmark in Australian history and we went through the islands. We started transiting back down south, forming advanced collision avoidance as we went. Day four, we arrived back in Henderson where we performed collision avoidance activities. Arrive at beautiful Rottnest Island and then back to Hostel Henderson Shipyard. My name is Jake Bailey. I work for Hostel Ships as a project engineer, specifically for our patrol boat autonomy trial. It's really important to maintain strong bonds with members like Green Room and Taz. They're really important stakeholders in the defence industry for getting the latest and greatest technology and enablers for us to develop ships and then integrate all this fantastic technology into one platform that works cohesively together and brings the best of all worlds. I still can't do everything, so we rely on our defence industry around us. One of the most exciting aspects of working on an autonomous ship is just seeing all the work that we've done behind the scenes actually out in the out in the real world doing real world things and being able to say you know hey that part of the software is you know something that I've written or or whether it's hardware you know that was all you know prepared by myself or part of the team so it's really cool just seeing everything you know being able to be brought into real life not just in theory but but on the water as well. My name is Nathan Edwards and I'm a robotics engineer with Grenroom Robotics. I think one of the best learning experiences being part of this project is certainly the interaction and learnings from different people um, from different backgrounds, whether it's getting feedback from uh, the crew themselves and you know getting them involved in operating the vessel and trying to get you know, get learn from there and their their experiences and trying to integrate that into our software, into our products. Um, and, I, and I suppose that comes back down to collaborate, the sort of collaborative environment that we've got going on this project. Be standing on a ship like this and seeing it uh, navigate autonomously, solve collision avoidance problems autonomously, it doesn't get more real than, than this project. It's uh, super exciting. We discovered through this, this process that we had to change course a number of times. Austal, the lead on this project, were fantastic. And as they recognised some of the challenges they were experiencing as the contracting agency, we had to be flexible, open to new directions, and also work on the relationship back to the defence client to make sure that everyone understood what we were doing and why we were doing it. And I think that's central to all innovation programs. My name is Simon Ng, I'm the Chief Technology Officer at TAS. It's just so good to be on this vessel and, and seeing it work. I've got to say a big thank you to Austal Green Room Robotics. We're not quite finished yet, but it's been an, a really impressive journey. I'm hoping that somehow we can translate this into another phase of development. And I think there's a fantastic opportunity here for Defence to invest in a program that's going to help them answer the challenges they've identified 
as part of the uh, Defence Strategic Review and as part of the Surface Fleet Review.